healthcare and sustainability are directly linked. Reducing carbon emissions will enable the National Health Service to save money, meet regulations and improve public health. In order to meet its obligations under the Climate Change Act, the NHS needs to embed sustainable practices across the sector. This includes people, procurement and processes. The urgency of this problem means this process must start immediately. There is no room for failure. In this programme we hear the views of Sir Ian McAllister, Chairman of the Carbon Trust, who work with NHS trusts to help cut energy costs and carbon emissions. We also hear from leading sustainability innovators Stroma, Occup Energy and Advanced Power Technology who talk about their solutions designed to help the NHS to reduce its carbon footprint. It makes sense to reduce your energy bill and use that money to provide better hospital services. I think the message I would, I would give to all politicians, whether it's the Prime Minister or the Secretary of State for Health, is that the government has said that this is one of the most pressing issues facing the planet. Well, if that is the case, actions need to speak louder than words, and we have to make it a key priority for everyone. And given the size and the importance of the national health in the United Kingdom and its role in looking to the future, the future of all of us with longevity, improving our health, it's equally important to improve the health of the planet by reducing the amount of carbon that all of us use. Stroma are a privately owned independent consultancy that provides advice and guidance to clients, both public and private, with regard to their obligations in complying with the increasing amount of legislation and regulations that have to be complied with with regards to energy performance in buildings, in, in essence. We began in 2002 and our first offering was to provide air tightness testing of new large buildings, which for the first time, back in 2002, needed to be tested under Part L of the building regulations. Since then, our service offerings grown immeasurably, such that to today, depending on who you ask, we are known as one of the few government-approved providers of certification and training for energy assessors and code assessors. Other people know us as air tightness testers, acoustic testers and advisors. Other people know us as a, a contracting company, serving construction projects, providing air, air sealing, fire protection and fire stopping. And we're known for our expertise in renewables. So on any given day, we're engaged in all of those different activities. But the common denominator is providing improvements in sustainability and energy performance in buildings and complying with the prevailing regulations. My understanding is the NHS is one of the Europe's largest employers and as such one of the largest emitters of carbon uh, in the UK certainly. I believe 3% of the UK's carbon emissions come from the NHS and all the many buildings that that comprises. So in, on that level alone the NHS has a responsibility to try to improve its performance. We are uh, very well placed to provide a full carbon reduction consultancy and delivery offering, which would really begin with the analysis of the existing data for any given building or collection of buildings to try to understand what's going on now and then followed by more detailed studies and, and on-site surveys of the buildings, gathering more data, using that data to create virtual models of the buildings in dynamic simulation modelling software to build a picture of the relative performance of the buildings in question. Sustainability improvements can be made by means of better control and measurement and monitoring of energy consumption within buildings, sharing information, making people within those buildings more aware of how to more efficiently run them. Giving information to, to the users of buildings can often be empowering. In our experience, once people know how they're performing with regard to energy efficiency, particularly if it's in comparison to others, they're motivated to improve. In general terms, Stroma's service offering with regard to energy uh, improvement and carbon reduction is uh, many and varied, beginning with simple straightforward display energy certification as is required every year in public buildings, 
we not only provide those, but a sister company trains and accredits others to do it as well. So you'd like to think we know what we're doing in that regard. Right through to a full service carbon reduction consultancy offering. Of course, improving the energy efficiency and reducing the carbon emissions from a building isn't a discrete exercise. It doesn't have a beginning, middle and end. There's perhaps a lot of activity up front. But one of the most important elements of the whole process is the ongoing monitoring, targeting and management of energy use in a building. We can provide the, the software to carry out that task and the training required to, to use it effectively. But on top of that, the day-to-day the -day housekeeping, the behaviour of the staff within the building is, is vital. To, to avoid situations where, for instance, air conditioning is running at the same time as heating. So simple housekeeping approaches can be rolled down, we can provide that training and everyone can buy into the whole ethos of energy efficiency within a given building. So to conclude, the need to improve energy efficiency within buildings, both new ones and existing ones, is an issue that's only going to increase in its importance. And Stroma is very well placed to advise the NHS and assist the NHS in delivering those objectives. We've done it before. Right now we're working on projects involving social housing improvement as well as public building improvement, employing a range of different strategies and, and techniques. And as well as being a dynamic growing company, we're very hands-on. Right now, as I speak, we've got Stroma staff who are doing a range of different things to improve energy efficiency within buildings, whether it be testing them on site or information gathering on site, carrying out sophisticated dynamic simulation modelling, the desktop exercise, or literally up scaffolding towers doing improvement work on buildings. We're very hands-on, as well as being advisors in a traditional sense. And in that respect, I think we can deliver to the NHS. My message to the boards of national health hospitals, trusts, or, or whatever organisation that, they, that, uh, that there are there, is that it makes business sense to deal with energy costs. Energy costs are very unlikely to fall. Gas prices are at an all-time high. We can demonstrate, based upon the installation of all the energy-saving equipment that we've done across businesses throughout the United Kingdom, that for every one pound invested, then the company gets a return of seven pounds in terms of savings. That make, makes good business sense. Occup Energy is a renewable energy company. We're UK-based with a national presence. We concentrate our philosophy on energy creation through the wind turbines that we sell and also energy conservation through our LED lighting. Our LED lighting is an area that we are focused on, which is to deliver a quality product to reduce energy consumption and the cost of electricity. LED lighting is an area that we're concentrating greatly on. Everyone remembers the pocket calculators of the 60s and also things like little watches that people used to have. The LED lighting has been around since the early 1900s. Not many people appreciate that it was actually the Russians that developed these. In many cases, the lighting is still working. Nowadays, though, we have a much wider range, and in the last few years, there's a commercial scale that has never been seen before. The use of LED lighting in the NHS has major advantages. For instance, the consumption of electricity on an LED light is approximately a quarter of what it would be in an incandescent light. So if we were to deploy this throughout a hospital, we can save huge amounts of, of electricity and obviously huge costs for the, for the hospital. Other advantages that the LED lighting offers is the quality of the lighting is significantly better than incandescent lighting. In addition, there are no hazardous wastes from, from lighting once it's disposed of. So if you look at the total cost of the actual lighting the, and the disposal of them and the life cycle of, of the LED lighting, it's a major compelling argument to deploy it within a hospital environment. LED lighting has several major advantages. One of them is the long life of an LED light. Up to 50,000 hours for a standard uh, product that we have. Indeed, some of the original lights that were made by the Russians in the 1920s are still working. So we expect our lights to last a long time. One of the other advantages, and something perhaps that is at the forefront of everyone's mind at the moment, is carbon footprint. 
Using LED lighting, we can dramatically reduce the carbon footprint. So why is LED something that the hospital should consider? LEDs can save up to 60 to 70 percent of your lighting costs. In an environment such as a hospital, where lighting can be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 365 days a year, there are massive savings to be made through the deployment of LED lighting. So what is an LED? Well, first of all, it stands for Light Emitting Diode. And an LED is something we probably all see all around us, but we don't understand quite how it works. So the best way to do that is to compare it to something we already know and see all the time, which is a normal light bulb. So what does that have? It has a glass bulb. Well, an LED doesn't have that. It's made out of plastic, so it's highly robust and durable. Well, inside the bulb, there's a coil of wire, which electricity passes through to make it glow. Well, an LED doesn't do that either, so it makes it uh, a very long life product. And thirdly, in the bulb, you usually have hazardous gases to make the thing work. And in LED, there's none of those as well. So the end of life disposal is much, much easier. Let's look at some of the end user benefits to installing LED lighting and probably the best way to do that is comparing it against fluorescent lighting. Uh, we know uh, with fluorescent lighting when you turn it on it takes up to 15 seconds to come on fully. Well with LED lighting it comes on immediately which is a great benefit. One of the other benefits of LED lighting is that it works all the time uh, and reliably whereas uh, fluorescent tubes as we know as they get towards the end of their uh, lifespan they begin to flicker which is a great annoyance to people actually working in that environment uh, and when you come to change uh, a fluorescent tube you've got the uh, concerns about glass and harmful chemicals where again with LED lighting there's none of those concerns so from a health and safety benefit uh, they are a much better uh, option. Some of the other benefits of LED lighting is that there is no UV emitted from them and there's no heat. So again, from a health and safety and a work environment point of view, they're a great benefit. Uh, really, uh, LEDs tick all the boxes and they are the future of lighting. As I've mentioned previously, between 60 and 70% of your lighting costs can be reduced by putting in LED lighting. How difficult is it to do? It's not difficult. You simply replace the lighting like you would any other lighting. In a hospital environment, the most important thing is minimum disruption. In a high energy environment, using LEDs, we can actually get a payback of between 18 months and two years. Finally, what's important to everybody, and which is headline news at the moment, your carbon footprint. Everybody's obliged to look at it. Using LED lighting will reduce your carbon footprint. For a hospital which is under pressure in terms of its resources, money saved on energy can be used to spend on life-saving equipment or on other resources to improve the health of the nation. Advanced Power Technology have been operating for around 20 years, providing it, the infrastructure around IT equipment. So anything that protects the server to keep the power going to that server, to cool it, to protect it from water ingress or fire or theft. This is what we do. We provide the infrastructure around that IT equipment to keep it running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Information systems within the NHS have become more integrated and more critical at the same time. Patient records online, uh, real-time data, digital x-rays, uh, PCs on wards, links with GPs, um, computer information it has become so important day to day with the day to day running of the NHS. Uh, increasing government standards, um, you know, meaning that um, uh, the, the level of service that they provide, but also um, on what impact that this ever increasing infrastructure has on the environment. The government standards are squeezing this and day to day the IT manager has to take all this into consideration. We come across people who've been sitting there spending time and effort trying to work out how they're going to meet this day to day to meet all these requirements. We walk in, we've got all this experience, the knowledge, the products, we can provide a solution that meets their requirements 
whilst leaving them uh, more time and resources to spend on other areas of, of patient care. Advanced power technology have always focused on providing the most efficient solutions. This is why we've partnered with manufacturers such as APC by Schneider, who manufacture modular, scalable systems, which allow us to right-size the equipment and provide just-in-time power and cooling. What that really means is, in the past, we would have had to put in a large uninterruptible power supply system, a UPS system, on day one, even though the installation wouldn't require that much power for two or three years or more. Well now, we can put a UPS system in there that starts with, say, a 16 kilowatt power module, put another power module into that UPS system, and that will give 16 kilowatts N plus 1. And as the IT requirement increases, we put another power module in, a few more batteries, another power module, a few more batteries, and this grows. And what this means is that um, on day one, the capital costs are kept down, but also, critically, the system is much more efficient. It's not running inefficiently for, for a few years until it gets up to 85, 90% load. And this modular scalable model can be run with the, the, the cooling, the racks, the distribution, the generators, all of the, even to even to the room. You know, we can we can now build modular rooms. So we build a room that's six meters by seven meters, and then when it expands, the requirement expands beyond that. We can grow the room out. Um, this is this whole modular approach that allows right sizing and um, just-in-time power and cooling. We're constantly coming across people who've been trying to work out how they're going to protect their critical IT equipment, um, how they're going to make use of existing space. One of the common requests from the NHS at the moment is, how do I turn my laundry or my X shower block into a server room? Well, with our experience and our knowledge and the products that we have available, we can come in, we can do a site survey, we can discuss the requirements and we can provide a solution. I remember when I was at school I was given a blazer that was far too big for me, uh, that was going to take years to grow into. By the time I'd grown into it, it was worn out and it was out of date. It's the same with, um, with IT rooms, with data centres. Imagine if a child could be given one set of clothes at five years old that would grow with them until they were ten and beyond. Fantastic. Well, we can now do that with the infrastructure around the IT equipment. We can grow it in a modular, scalable fashion. We've partnered with world-class manufacturers who've spent millions of pounds researching and developing this magical blazer that expands as you grow. We provide a robust system that protects the IT equipment in the hospital, that's a financially sound investment that brings down the carbon footprint, and most important of all, keeps those systems online 24-7, 365 days a year. We hope this programme has been a valuable resource for NHS trusts in their mission to reduce energy costs and carbon emissions. I'm Georgina Burnett and you've been watching Solutions for a Sustainable Health Environment.